In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change a patch, preset, or program via Ableton Live or your Ableton Push. There's no straightforward way to do it in Ableton Live as of 9.7. You can use clips, which are tedious and not straightforward, but this way is a more solid way to do it. All it requires is downloading a VST audio unit. So over here, you'll see the CTRLR. You'll go to the website. And you can see it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and you can control any of the MIDI components via your VST audio unit. It's a great program. Now, once you have it installed and set up, you'll load it as an audio unit VST. Then you're gonna load the instrument rack, which you can search on Ableton, and that's going to enable us to use a push with the CTRLR controller. Just search it up, load it up. Now we're going to put the controller CTRLR VST audio unit in that instrument rack. Voila. Now we're going to go to the panels, create a new panel, have it in edit mode based on that grid, select a slider any slider you want. Just use the most basic ones, start up. There's other options, but we'll stick with this one for now. Here you can see all the parameters. Stretch out the screen so you can see all of them. Now you see it there. You can change the name, colors, make it look as pretty as you want. Do whatever you want. So we're gonna scroll down to the MIDI because that's how we're gonna control external effects where is it at? There we go. Now we're going to make sure that we select the type. We're going to choose program change. You can choose any other ones, but this is the MIDI message that we want to send. This is what will be interpreted by the VST audio unit or any equipment. Now that it's selected, you're going to choose the MIDI channel. In this case, I'm using the Dave Smith Tetra and I've configured it to only set and receive messages via MIDI channel 2. So you would configure it that way. And now you would take it out of edit mode via this. Controls. And here you can see that you can control the panel and decide what it is. DSI Tetra, that's what your computer is detecting for the input and the output. Go ahead and choose that. And you can select the MIDI channel. But we've already got it to override based on those previous parameters when we clicked on that control. Now you're going to save it as whatever you like. And that is what you're going to end up with. And you can configure a custom one. And then save the project. The next time you reload this, it's going to load that panel. So once that's all configured, you would do a mapping. Mapping, you would have to open up the parameters for that VST for that effect. Here's the mapping. Hit that map button if you want, but first you want to load the parameters of that VST. Boom, lots of them. But we want the first one because that's the first one we created. When it updates, it's going to show that modulator, but right now it's not showing it. When it refreshes, you'll see that. Here we go, click on it. Now click map, voila, it's there. Now, whenever you change it sitting, it would change the mapping, it would change that MIDI. It would send that program change to whatever piece of hardware you have. But it would be tedious if you had to do it from the panel each time, so it's easier to have it set up as instrument rack. That way, whenever you're looking at Ableton Push, it's going to show those eight settings that you have right there in the instrument rack, kind of like this. Here's the one that I have saved, and it's a preset so that I can load it up anytime I load a project. Here you can see the program change and different effects that I've got going on that all line up with that macro control. So now I'm going to be playing and changing the patch. So 
so let's go ahead and do a drum beat really quick. Like that first one. 